because most of the intersections are not. And uh, the methodology, first of all, on the field, we actually uh, estimated, estimated uh, make it counted the vehicle, uh, vehicle density and hourly vehicle volume. And also, uh, pedestrian volume, number of pedestrians not using the bridges were also counted on an hourly basis. And actually, uh, they were expanded uh, for a day. We actually expanded by multiplying uh, uh, for we actually found the average number of pedestrians in a weekday. Uh, and we actually did that by multiplying the hourly pedestrian uh, volume uh, by 12. Why we have, we have used 12 there? As because uh, uh, by, we know that pedestrian volume is not available from after uh, it is after 11 p.m. at night, pedestrian is almost zero, and also uh, uh, pedestrian is actually available. Uh, pedestrians are usually cross the road from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. So, and also there is a off-peak hour, uh, which can be taken as from uh, 1 to 3 p.m. So that is why uh, we have the 12 marketplace of 12 hours to get the hourly pedestrian, uh, paid pedestrian volume. And we have taken the average weekday pedestrian volume. So, uh, first of all, this uh, predict, uh, the PRE, that is uh, pedestrian risk exposure, it was estimated, uh, that is, uh, by the predicted pedestrian crashes. And these predicted pedestrian crashes were, uh, it was uh, predicted by the Swedish crash frequency prediction model. And it's a typical model, that is, if a road has a very general design, very typical design. So they uh, actually this formula that is the average vehicle vehicle volume and the average vehicle person. If you have an estimation of number, estimation of that. So by multiplying them, you can get the uh, predicted uh, number of crashes, uh, which gives uh, which gives a predicted number of crashes for a typical design, typical design of the road. And we have used that predicted number of crashes and we have divided it by the average weekly pedestrians and we have we actually uh, predicted pedestrian crashes were multiplied by 15 for 15 years estimated in for 15 years so that is why it has been multiplied by uh, 50 and uh, also the number of pedestrian crashes Par crossing pedestrian and actually it's par million crossing pedestrian that is why we have multiplied by the for six. So uh, and the observed pedestrian is six percent. It was actually we had a data from um, uh, from our uh, accident research institute of Web. So we actually aggregated the value of uh, pedestrian crashes for fifteen years. And we have divided the observed pedestrian crashes for 15 years divided by the average weekday pedestrians on the 365 that means uh, in, uh, for uh, 365 days on the 15 that means in 15 years. So uh, we also actually estimated some traffic flow parameters based on the macroscopic traffic flow equation, such as time level and average travel speed. So these things were actually used in our uh, model. So, uh, first of all, to achieve the first objective that we do, to achieve the first objective that the model, uh, uh, that is to model the pedestrian risk exposure, the observed pedestrian risk exposure, we have used multiple regression analysis in this case, and we actually uh, model the observed pedestrian risk exposure and associated variables for particular intersections of the so modeling results show that average uh, daily traffic volume, average time and way, presence of pedestrian bridge at the intersection, and number of pedestrians crossing without pedestrian bridge are negatively associated with PRD. And while only vehicle speed has a positive correlation with the risk exposure. So this is our model result. So uh, from our modeling result, we can see that uh, from the uh, top that our overall model significance uh, is good and also these are the significant variables in our model that is uh, presence of overbridge, number of uh, vehicle volume, and time and weight, speed, and the uh, number of 
Palestinians who are not using their Palestinian leaders to play an armless violence. So uh, later on, uh, we actually uh, compared the observed Palestinian accidents and the credited Palestinian accidents, and in that way, we have actually ranked the intersections where the predicted Palestinian, uh, observed Palestinian accident is greater than the predicted Palestinian accident. So, so uh, where the predicted uh, observed Palestinian accidents are greater than the predicted Palestinian uh, accidents, they are targeted more accident prone intersections. So then a rank has been done based on their numbers. So, uh, and in this way, we have got 16 intersections, where which were more accident-prone uh, intersections, and we have also plotted them, the 16 intersections, actually uh, based on some range from 1 to 20 to 1 to 100. And later on, we have, but uh, actually uh, the main point I was showing the. Uh, more accidental intersection is that the difference between if you consider the risk, more risky Palestinian problem. So uh, the intersection that is the long term Google observed risk is compared with the predicted risk exposure. Observed risk exposure is predicted risk exposure. Now if the risk observed risk exposure is greater than the predicted risk exposure, that means that intersection is more risky. As because the predicted risk exposure is based on a typical design, and we always want our intersection to perform better than the typical design. So uh, the intersections whose risk exposure is more than the predicted risk exposure, so they are more risky intersections, more risky intersections. So that is why uh, they are ranked based on their 16 intersections, and we can easily see that uh, more accident prone intersections rank. And uh, the first one is Sandra, according to more accident prone intersections. But if we consider the risky pedestrian crossings, more risky pedestrian crossings, then the staff road crossing is the number one. So rent is actually bad if you consider the risk. So uh, we also plotted the uh, risky pedestrian crossing, the 60 pedestrian crossings were plotted according to several range from very low, low, medium, very high, and high. So also they can be related with the factors. That means uh, the, we can see that for our intersections, this is number one, rank number one, there is no overbridge. So obviously we have correlated the factors, in the, the uh, significant factors. So that we can really see that there is no overbridge, there is no risk, so that is why the risk is very very much greater here in this intersection. So in this way, we can also formulate, explain this risk exposure based on these factors. So if we can uh, reduce the, uh, actually reduce the speed, reduce the, uh, increase the time that way, and also actually if, uh, if the density, if the density increases, and if the number of people actually decreases, number of people without using the pedestrian is so essentially, it will actually reduce the observed risk exposure. So and, and it will actually reduce the observed risk exposure uh, below the predicted risk exposure. So in this way, we can actually evaluate the performance of the intersection in terms of the pedestrian crossing environment. So uh, that uh, so uh, at last, I uh, can uh, the implication of this research is that the uh, modeling results and also the uh, evaluation of the pedestrian risk exposure it will provide the transportation planners a guideline for prioritizing among the intersections. They will take a rank that which intersection is most risky, most risky, and how they can uh, reduce the risk. Uh, is they can use these factors, which factors they have to focus to reduce the risk of that intersection. So uh, that is all. Awesome. Yeah, very good, Mesa. Very good, uh, you have done very well. Now, question to you. Comment? No comment? Uh, you, you have done very well. Uh, I would say that uh, uh, I can do some just. One, uh, in the 